stay. <laughs> I know I said I'm not going to do any more explanatory videos, but something has come up that's so great and so cool, I just have to uh, present it to you as a gift from our Nachua. So, <laughs> last night, Davey woke me up at midnight and I went spontaneously into Turiya, which is an inexplicable state of consciousness where all the three other states, waking, dreaming, and sleeping, are present simultaneously. And it's amazing, it's like the whole physical universe disappears and everything well, it's not explainable, <laughs> but it's great, it's wonderful, and everyone should pursue this wonderful state of Turiya. So you might ask, well, how did I get into that? And the answer is through the most confidential, secret, and powerful mantra, which I recently discovered, but well, not so recently, about a year ago. So let me tell you the story. This is from the Srimad Devi Bhagavatam, 10th Skanda, chapter 12. This king, it was a great, very pious king named Surata. Now Rata means a chariot, when they used to fight on chariots in those days. And Surata means like the master chariot fighter. So, he was in charge of a, a wonderful kingdom. He followed all the Vedic principles and all the people were very happy and prosperous. Unfortunately, there was some diplomatic, um, you know, skullduggery and he was forced out of his kingdom. Uh, they were gonna try to assassinate him, but he escaped. So he was wandering in the forests and he came to the hermitage of a sage. And the merciful sage said, look, you stay here, I'll protect you. Nobody can come here with my mystic powers that will, you know, block out all impious people and deeds. So he said, okay, I'll stay with you. And after a few days, he was wandering and he went back down by the river. And he found another man sitting there very depressed and he said oh my friend you look troubled what happened to you so this turns out to be a merchant named samadhi and something very similar happened to him where there was some conspiracy among his family members took away all his wealth and he had to leave for fear of his life and like that so they both wound up at the hermitage of this sage so they were talking with each other and they said, look, we can't solve our problems on our own. Let's go talk to the sage and ask for his recommendation. So they go and see the sage, tell them the whole story, all the problems and everything. And he says, okay, you couldn't solve your problem by yourself because you didn't have the right method. Now I will give you the method now. So he starts to tell the story of Chanda and Munda. And this is part of the story of the appearance of Maha Saraswati. Saraswati is the goddess of learning, the wife of Lord Brahma, the creator. So in part of this story, the demigods come to the goddess and they say, please save us. There are these two terrible demons Shumba and Nishumba, and they are causing a lot of trouble throughout the three worlds. Now, <laughs> Shumba means murder, <laughs> and Nishumba means like murder junior. <laughs> so this, this guy, murder and his sidekick, junior, they were just going around killing people, and they were very powerful. They had some benedictions from Shiva or something. So they were causing a lot of trouble. And so Saraswati said, no problem. I will create 
a portion of myself to go and kill them. And for, so from her eyebrow, she just ra when he sh she heard the story, she just raised her eyebrow a little bit like, hmm. And from her eyebrow came out another female goddess form. And so her name is Chamunda, and we'll see why her name is Chamunda in a minute. So the demigods retired to their places, and the goddess came to planet Earth where these demons were staying. And so she was there, you know, riding on her lion. <laughs> She's a form of Durga, by the way. Chamunda is a form of Durga. So uh, she's just, you know, riding around in the forest on her lion. And one of the ministers of Shumba and Nishumba happens to see her. And of course, she's exquisitely beautiful, highly attractive and wonderful. So he goes back to his masters and tells them, oh, there's this beautiful woman that you should have, you know. And uh, so he sends his ministers, uh, Chanda and Munda. Uh, now it's not Chanda, it's Chanda. And it's not Munda, it's Munda. Uh, these are the letters with the dots under them. So Chanda means violent, cruel, nasty, you know, mean. And Munda, well, our English word mundane comes from Munda. So it just means low and materialistic and, you know, just a nasty kind of person. So these are demons. <laughs> they go approach the goddess <laughs> and they proposition her. They say, look, our masters, Shumba and Nushumba, are like the masters of the three worlds. Nobody can fight them, even the demigods. And they're enjoying all kinds of the best things in the universe and prosperity and wealth and everything. So you should become, you know, their wife and let them enjoy you. And then in turn, you will enjoy all of their wealth and other facilities. And she goes, well, you know, I have a problem with that. <laughs> First of all, I'm already married to Shiva. And second of all, I made a vow that I would only marry someone if he has an equal martial prowess, equal strength in fighting. And so the, uh, the two ministers decide to test her and they attack. And of course they lose. <laughs> they lose their heads, Chanda and Munda. And so she got the name Chamunda, which is a contraction of the two, Cha, Chanda and Munda. So Chamunda, the goddess Chamunda, is very, very powerful. And of course, she went on to defeat Shumba and Nushumba. And that's, you know, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> but from this incident came this mantra and I've been playing it uh, at low volume underneath the story the whole time. So you've been hearing it already. Huh? It's Aung, Aing, Hring, Kling, Chamundaye Vitche. Aung, Aing, Hring, Kling, Chamundaye Vitche. Now, this is an extremely powerful mantra. So the sage gave this mantra to these two unfortunates, King Surata and the merchant uh, Samadhi. So they went off and they began to practice and, and they did other tantric practices along with it. But their primary practice was this mantra. And after some time, they both got darshan of the goddess goddess Durga. So the king, he went into Samadhi and he saw Durga and he asked her, you please restore uh, my rightful kingdom and you know, I, I want to be back in my correct position. 
So she said, all right, no problem. And, and she, so she arranged everything so he got his kingdom back. But the merchant, when he got Darshan of the goddess, he said, my dear goddess, mother, I only want self-realization. I only want enlightenment. Please grant that liberation to me. She said, no problem. Huh? So this is a wonderful story because it shows that even though a kshatriya, a king, is trained up in all the Vedic ways and everything, his principal aim in life is really material domination of his enemies, of his kingdom, you know, and accruing wealth and power and other things. But this simple merchant, huh? the merchants are, you know, very simple dollars and cents kind of people. But in this case, by association with the sage, he got a higher wisdom. And so his samadhi led him to moksha, whereas the king's samadhi and darshan led only, you know, back to his kingdom. And there he was with all his attachments and stuff, you know. <laughs> we don't know what happened to him later, but we know that the merchant attained uh, moksha, liberation, just by chanting this mantra. So the moral of the story is, well, number one, don't approach the goddess with any material desire. And especially don't desire her. That's a good way to get your head cut off or other things. <laughs> Just don't do it, okay? She is the mother. She is your mother. So you should treat her with great respect. Huh? She is the most honorable. You know, and lately, after a couple of years now, well, two and a half years now I, since I was initiated into the Sri Vidya, she is coming in dreams and giving instruction and help and just association. Just her wonderful presence is so blissful and so elevating. So this is the moral of the story. If you want, uh, oh yeah, oh, and I forgot to mention Vichay, the meaning, the deep esoteric meaning of this mantra, right, is that Aum, oh, the supreme Brahman. And then the next word is Ain. And Ain is a, a bija that represents knowledge. Because Chamunda came, goddess Chamunda came from Saraswati. She is an expansion of Saraswati, goddess of learning. So she's the ultimate guru. Therefore, she's approached with Aing, like in the mantra, Aing Gurve Namaha. So this is the Guru Bija mantra. So approaching her as Guru, Hring is the next syllable, the next Bija. And Hring means, O oh Goddess, O oh Mother of the Universe. Okay, so we're approaching her as Mother, but also as Guru. And then the next bija is kling. Kling stands for desire. Not any kind of desire, but transcendental desire. That uh, I am approaching you with this prayer, with this wish, with this sankalpa, this desire. Uh, that chamundaye, Chamundaye means what you gave, how you treated Chanda and Munda. Huh? Chanda and Munda are you know, evil, nasty, low people who only have material desires. Huh? Vitche. Vitche means to separate, <laughs> separate the head, <laughs> to kill, to destroy. So, so, in the, so it's, oh, oh, Supreme Brahman, huh? 
Saguna Brahman, the goddess, I am accepting you as a guru, O Supreme Mother of the Universe. And I have this desire that please kill all the low and mean, nasty, passionate desires in me. Aum, Aing, Ring, Kling, Chamundaye, Vitche. You chant this mantra and you just see what's going to happen. <laughs> Of course, the more background you have, the more preparation, the more you study the scriptures and their practices and so on. I'm putting a link in the description to the Srimad Devi Bhagavatam where all these stories are found. The more foundation, the more background you have, the more potent this mantra will be. So, Please take this mantra, especially those of you who are already on the Sri Vidya path, and if you've been initiated in the Siddhi mantra and, and the Shodashi mantra like that, this will be especially powerful for you. And attain the state beyond all understanding, beyond all explanation, huh? the state of Turiya. Aum Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.